What's up guys, welcome to Valdora Kuhn. From our previous episode, we have witnessed Benamaru's reaction on the engagement offer. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, I will put the link in the description below. Just a quick warning, these videos contain spoilers from the light novel. By the way, please follow my backup channel with all the lost videos. Also, don't forget to join our Discord community, Baldora Kun Subordinates. The link is in the description box. So now in this video we will review what happened next, which is the meeting between Tempest and the Tengu tribe. But before we will proceed, please like, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Now without further ado, let's proceed with the video. Remuru leaped up at the sound of someone shouting in his ear. He notices that Mamiji was there, fuming and sick of waiting any longer. This time, he definitely couldn't tune her out. He gave up and sat back in his seat, facing her. He asked her, let me ask you a question. Does Frey have ambitions on Tengu territory? And she questions him back, ah. What nonsense is that? She rolled her eyes, then realized Remuru was being serious. After a moment of realization, she said, you got to be joking. Remuru thinks that they seem to be developing a grave misunderstanding, so he decided to let her give a detailed explanation of her own situation. And here's what Mamiji said. The place Frey had her eyes on was the capital of sorcerer's dynasty Sarian, city embraced by the divine tree, Elmen Sarian. She wanted it not for its territory, but for its height. Remuru can't believe that's actually her goal. It was very in character for her, but Remuru couldn't laugh about it. In terms of size, Sarian was a huge country. Frey didn't have the military resources to overwhelm it. However, though the Sarian army could utilize its geographic advantage to look down on land armies from above, they couldn't avoid the harsh battle against the great army of Frey who could fly freely in the sky. Tactically, they were an even match, but Frey refused to let her ambitions stay just ambitions forever. She wanted to recruit the powerful Tengu race to bolster her arsenal against Sarian. However, the Tengu were a prideful race, not ready to so easily accept Frey's demands. Sarian had also predicted how the Tengu would act. They simply observed the other two factions battling each other until they depleted their strength. Of course, Frey also realized this and didn't make a move without caution. And so, a twisted triangle relationship was thus formed. It was then that the war between Remuru and Clayman broke out, and Carrion and Frey gave up their posts and resolved to serve the demon lord Milam. A powerful force was thus born. One that the Tengu tribe was unable to defend against. And now their government was in a heated debate over how to hold themselves going forward. And then Benimeru came along, taking one of the beast Katir Alvis with him. Bad idea. It has caused Mamiji to have misunderstood that they were quietly pressuring them. Remuru asked Geld, what's the situation on Freysan's side? Geld was in charge of the construction of their new capital, he had been taking orders from Frey, making him the most familiar with her out of their little group. To which Geld responds, well, Sir Remuru, Lady Frey seems tremendously satisfied with your plans. She's even able to communicate smoothly with Murdsan who doesn't like to talk, even holding detailed discussions in the past. Remuru is amazed that Frey could communicate with Murd. He said, I see. So has she lost interest in Elman Sarian? And Geld confirms, indeed. Actually, speaking of that, Frey Sama's interest has turned to, um, I think I've spoken too much. Remuru is eager to know what Geld was about to say, what? What happened to Frey's interest? Then Geld is hesitant, yes sir, actually, I haven't seen Lady Milam around lately. Frey Sama who was responsible for educating her didn't pay attention for a second, and she ran off to God knows where. Remuru knows where she is. But for the sake of this conversation, he's gonna pretend he know nothing of it. Just like the saying, don't go look for trouble yourself. Geld concluded, as a result, I'd say that Lady Frey's primary focus at the moment is figuring out where Lady Milam went. And Mamiji, listening to all this stuff going against what she imagined, was stunned into silence, unable to figure out how to react. They were just keeping up their guard against a certain enemy that might cause crisis to their race, but it turned out she had switched her focus long ago. Mamiji said, all right. I understand the whole thing now. So there you have it. If you recognize all that as the misunderstanding it was, I'm cool with that. It was likely 
because the Tengu had kept away from the world and were less informed on current affairs. The worry that they were surrounded by enemies had clouded Mamiji's judgment. Such anxiety caused Mamiji to misjudge. Ramuru could see why she made the decision she did. Mamiji added, I can't believe that it was me who thought too much. Mother did say I was overthinking matters. After finishing her words, Mamiji felt relieved. Seeing how she reacted, they all gained a very profound insight into how terrifying it was to cause too much misunderstanding. Jumping to conclusions can bite you hard. Since the misunderstanding had been resolved, the meeting quickly concluded. The Tengu didn't want Ramuru's group to interfere with them because they mistakenly thought they were prepping for an invasion. Now that their misunderstanding had been resolved, there was no reason why they shouldn't communicate. Ramuru asked, then, is that everything? And Mamiji said, yes. My thanks to you, Demon Lord Ramuru, we are extremely grateful for your understanding and participation in this helpful meeting with us. And now they had also signed a pact. Now the remaining issues were the relationship between Hakuru and Mamiji, as well as the marriage between Benimaru and her. A young Tengu member announced something, there's one more thing. Please have a look at this. Our elder, Lady Kaede, has this letter for you, Lord Ramuru. Rigard took the letter and handed it to Shuna for her to open. She began to read the content of the letter out loud. The content of the letter started with some abstruse words of greeting, followed by some humble writing. But grew less formal as it went on. Shuna's face contorted in confusion as she read on, even though she's a headache to deal with and misunderstood you, I hope you will treat my daughter well. That child even bragged about letting Benimaru Dono fall in love with her before, and I am sure she is not against the idea. Ramuru thinks while hearing the letter if it was really for him. Mamiji who was on the ground, suddenly jumped up to take the letter from Shuna's hand and asked, Ma mother, what is this? Mamiji cried when she realized there were two letters, so so there were two letters? Mother, why can't you be more careful? Ramuru then realized that the letter for Hakuru was mixed with the letter for him. Hakuru comments, Haha. That's just like her. Hakuru, smirking, walked up to Mamiji, taking the crumpled up letter out of her hand and giving her a nod. He said, I see how it is now. Hakuru reads some lines from the letter, I know things are complicated and there have been a few misunderstandings, but I hope you will treat my daughter well. I hope that my senior and the father of that child, Kenki Hakuru Dono, will instruct her by hand and train her well. To my beloved husband, Kaede. I can't believe that girl is still in love with me. Ah, how lucky I am to live to see this day. Upon saying so, Hakuru began to laugh joyfully. Mamiji asked, are you, my father? And Hakuru replied, indeed. I am your father, Hakuru. Tears began to drop from Mamoji's eyes and said, Dad. Hakuru and Mamiji had given them a moving scene of a father-daughter reunion. Mamiji was no longer holding any suspicion against us or Hakuru. I must warn you, Mamiji, I am a hard taskmaster on the training grounds. To which Mamiji agreed. And Hakuru added, that's good. You will overcome the challenges with flying colors and have young master fall in love with you. Then Mamiji nodded and said, yes. Hakuro, usually gruff and reserved even in the best of times, suddenly had a daughter, and it turned him into a weepy, doting parent. He and Mamiji were in their own little world and Benimaru's word failed to reach them. Benimaru said, Oi, Hakuru. Shuna murmured, Ah, I see. Everyone's eyes fell on Shuna. She didn't mind a single bit as she gazed at Benimaru. She said, My brother, I have a message for you from Alvis Sama. Shuna looked at Benimaru directly. Pained looking Benimaru asked, What is it? Ramuru can get how Benimaru felt. He must have been thinking, Please, let's do this later. However, the cruel reality was that Shuna rolled her eyes and announced the message. She relayed the message Alvis sent her. It says, Benimaru sama, I've made up my mind. I intend to defeat Lady Mamiji in battle and take the right to be your wife for myself, and even if I am not so lucky, I still have the option of concubin. I refuse to give up, so prepare yourself. Shuna announced it while imitating Alvis's tone. The honor guards gasped. The executives were all worked up by it. And that's it for my video. Thank you so much. See you on my next upload.